Okay, so let's move on to our next segment, which is the idea incubator. In this segment, I ask my guests to share an idea, concept, or theory which has had a very profound impact in their life. Yeah. You've chosen to speak about vipassana meditation. Yep. But just before we dive into the practice, I would love to get your thoughts on your grandfather, Dr. S. N. Goenka. He is a recipient of the Padma Bhushan, one of the most renowned teachers of vipassana meditation in the world. What are some memories of your grandfather that you carry to this day? I think uh, uh, my grandfather was somebody who had a deep, profound impact in my life. Um, the positive uh, lessons we learned from him and his through his teachings of vipassana was something that resonated with me till date. Um, as with the entire family, you know, my cousins and stuff, vipassana plays a very key role in our lives. So I don't think we can separate. We can't separate that from us. Um, you know, some of the best memories of growing up with him was just the simplicity with which he approached a lot of the challenges and problems that he saw. Um, when you sat with him, he was able to be with you in the moment, um, and you felt that. I don't know how else to explain it. You know, there was this vibe of you. You felt he understood. You talked about. You know. Whether you talked about when I was growing up about school, whether you talked about when I further grew up about work, or whether you talked to him about theater, or you talked to him about some interests, he had this persona that when he looked at you, you felt like he could see right through your soul. You know, I, I don't know how else better to explain it, but you felt like he could tell. And he was able that he had this disarming quality of just being able to talk to you at your level that just meant so much more. um some of the best memories was just seeing him do all the work that he was doing and never really realize as you know i saw him as a child growing up all the way till uh, uh all the way till he passed away and you never realized the profound impact that he had i i don't think i realized the scale gamut size of vipassana and its impact till I did my first course at 17, 16, 17. I don't think I realized the impact. And I was like, okay, he does something with meditation. That's about it. That the you know, but then the you know he goes out. He's on tour. He's out in various parts of the world. This was back in the 80s, 90s when touring was not that common. But you know, he'd be out months in the year. Uh, we'd go down to the global centers. Igatpuri was the big one those days. Nowadays, Global Pagoda. you look at it but you don't really get the sense of this is huge at least not as a child you don't and you know the simplest of things so you know i remember when he used to come over as much younger as 6th grade and stuff so he used to spend before he went on the europe or us tours that he used to go on to he used to stop in dubai for 2 months and he got a lot of his work done over here um and in dubai we would see a very different side of him a very simple side you know grandfather side to him so he would come over simple we were living in an apartment and then every morning we'd go for a walk and those days we'd used to go to uh, hayat regency there was a creek in front of cornish in front of hayat regency and we'd go for a walk and it was really funny because those days he used to have this tv show that used to come out uh, called jagran that used to come out uh, on tv every morning and he, my grandmother and him used to be on and they would talk about meditation centering and on doordarshan was it no it was on uh, z tv was eventually but there was to be another tv channel i'm forgetting the name yeah something called jagran only like yeah, z, yeah, z, z jagran I, probably oh. yeah 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 so it yeah. started off on z that time there was no z jagran yeah. it started off as a show on z in the mornings right he, there's a couple of other channels i think there was one on doordarshan as well sure. i'm not sure but he used to have this show but it was really interesting because we'd go for this morning walk and i remember walking with him because you know somebody had to walk with him and my dad would be traveling sometimes so i'd have to go and so we'd walking in the morning and you'd see people kind of passing him away you know that look on the face like i've seen this guy somewhere yeah. and some people would stop him they would want to talk to him you know we're facing these challenges and it was always interesting he made time for people he made time to talk to them to talk to them about the challenges they were facing to help them out and there was never this commercial vested interest there was never a ulterior motive to him it was you need help i'm here and that i think had a profound impact on us all the kids in the family well i've not heard of many people having 
letters just hidden around the house of the <laughs> Dalai Lama just like spring no, cleaning no, no, you spring find cleaning, you find yeah, it yeah, yeah you find yeah, a letter from the Dalai Lama yeah, this yeah, never no, happened no, 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 no. <laughs> it was a different experience yeah. right I mean, oh my god yeah that's a uh, Dalai Lama's yeah. letter <laughs> I find yeah. embarrassing things about my like childhood and stuff you're finding letters from no the no no we find embarrassing things as well <laughs> but we find some of this stuff sometimes you, know, right? With, you clean up grandfather's stuff some stuff comes out yeah and Bill Clinton <laughs> I remember going to watch Bill Clinton when he came to the UAE back in 2011 I think or 2010 and he was giving a speech about uh, the foundation that he runs and yes i was in the, was a, i was just one of the students so yeah. not not yeah, he came a few times and uh, yeah. he came a couple of times to the american university he came a few times yeah uh, very charismatic speaker yeah. very uh, you know neighbor. think whatever you have <laughs> about him but yeah. the guy has charisma yeah he's amazing like public speaking charisma is just stands out, out. Of this world i met him another time uh, again in university was when he had come to launch his book my life um and uh, i remember getting a copy of the book signed a copy of the book from him and we got to spend about what 15 20 seconds as we were getting that book and i told him you know my grandfather and he went oh yeah i got that book from your grandfather please do say this say hello to him and it was an interesting moment uh, 15 20 seconds and i got went, that book yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> great um yeah uh, and all the words that he spoke about your grandfather they all make him sound such a wonderful person so well respected and loved i think so jack confield had once written about him that in every generation there are a few visionary and profound masters who hold high the lamp of dharma to illuminate the world and i think that's a great yeah um, no he was very well respected he never got into politics never never got into controversy uh politics he avoided it uh, my grandmother always accompanied him wherever he went she was also a principal uh, teacher in vipassana um so and he went around the world you know he uh, spoke at the united nations he spoke at um the world couple of world economic forums um and many many other trips uh, to various other important places but always with the view of let's find let's try and get people to move towards happiness through discovering themselves um like see things as they are and that was the principal goal of vipassana is meditate see who you are you just want to be a better human being no religious angle to it you can follow whatever religion you want just be a good human being 